It's not enough for Leah Thomas to win the medals that belong to biological women, actual women. Uh, Leah Thomas has now chosen to lecture us on how annoying we feminists are, or just women are, yes. <laughs> for yes. trying to shame Leah from enjoying Leah's medals. Listen to this. They're using the guise uh, of feminism to sort of push transphobic uh, beliefs. And I think a lot of people in that camp sort of carry an implicit bias against trans people, but don't want to, I guess, fully manifest or, or speak that out. And so they try to just play it off as this sort of half support. They think about how twisted feminism, quote unquote, feminism has become. Their arguments, you know, in order to exclude anybody in the trans category, you have to reduce women to reproductive capacity, which is, in my opinion, extremely anti-feminist. I don't want to put those women down either, and I know you don't want don't want to either, because I see pain. I, I see pain, and, I, and the pain <sighs> is coming from somewhere. It's not you, though. It's the patriarchy. And how can we get people to see that? Ah! <laughs> it's amazing. It's, pain, it's, our, it's pain caused by patriarchy, the evil yes. men, two of whom are sitting there on that set. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. There's so much in here. First, that they pretend like they don't know what a definition of a woman is. I actually think that host, if I read correctly, is actually also identifying as transgender. So is also, you know, he is? female to male. I think what? so. I think that's what I Oh, he's I think female to male. Oh, he's passing. Okay. Yes. He's female and to male. so Go we've ahead. we've got a lot, we've got a lot of confusion going on here, but whatever you want to call it, this is kind of condescending language towards women who very much understand the fight that we're in. Now, I don't necessarily identify as a feminist because there's a lot about feminist Same. ideology that I just can't agree with. I obviously have different stance on abortion and things like that. However, I do understand what a woman is. And the feminist that I see in this fight, I'm not talking about your like garden variety mainstream feminists who just go along to get along and say a man can become a woman. But there are real feminists who I don't agree with on a lot of things, but who are absolutely in this fight, who have made their definition of a woman, uh, the goal of their mission, absolutely clear. These people are playing dumb. They know what the definition of a woman is. It's not reducing women to a, reproductive capacity, which, by the way, would still be more of a substantive definition than saying that a woman is just growing out your hair and wearing a skirt, which is what they do. But they're pretending like we don't know. They're pretending like you and I are just these dumb victims and that if we were finally liberated and finally enlightened and not so scared and oppressed by the pa patriarchy, then we would finally understand that this person, Leah Thomas, is a real woman. And we would allow him into our locker rooms, into our bathrooms with glee. And obviously, you and I take issue with that for a variety of reasons. And, you know, this word transphobic, I've been thinking about this word. I said online recently, go ahead and call me transphobic. I don't care, I don't care what you call me. I, I, I believe what I believe. Women are women and men are men and ne'er yeah. the twain shall meet. It doesn't work. Yeah. You can't change your sex. And gender is really not a thing. Um, right. So, but so you can call me, but like the word transphobic, it, it suggests fear of trans people. Well, I'm not sure fear is exactly what it is, but anger, anger at the trans people who want to steal women's medals, who want to invade our, our pools, our locker room, our bathrooms, our sororities, recognition yeah. that they're being grossly inappropriate. Yeah. What's the word? If you want to yeah. use phobic as a short form for, I don't want you in any of those places. Fine. Okay then transphobic. What? I don't care. Yeah. Like the, the trans exclusionary radical feminist thing. I've got a bigger part with the uh, issue with the radical feminist part of that than I do with the trans exclusionary. I do want to be trans exclusionary yeah. when it comes to my bathrooms right. and my locker rooms and my sports and all women's spaces that belong only yeah. to women and not to men, even if they're confused, even if they're well-meaning, even if they're sick, most of whom suffer from this autogynophilia thing, which is where they just get off dressing like a no, as, as Kelly J. Keene says, we don't have to be part of their fetish. We don't have to do it. Yeah. Yes, we don't have to consent to that. You're absolutely right. And uh, I agree with you about the whole accusation of transphobia. I think a lot of people, a lot of well-meaning people who are on our side of this issue, who see the difference between male and female and realize the importance of the distinctions between male and female when it comes to spaces, when it comes to competitions, when it comes to laws and rights, 
Um, they waste time, I think, if I'm to put it politely, they waste time defending themselves, defending their virtue, defending their compassion, defending their empathy, and saying, no, I'm not transphobic, but, or I'm not a bigot, but. And look, I totally understand that inclination because you're not. You are a compassionate and loving person, but you're also a truthful person. And understand that you being in that truthful camp, you saying anything along the lines of, look, a man can't become a woman or at least maybe just saying that you don't believe a child should be put on puberty blockers, like the most innocuous and obvious and common sense stance ever, you're still going to be called a transphobe. You're still going to yeah, be called a bigot. You're not it doesn't avoid it. matter how much common sense you have. So I say don't even waste your time. Say, no, 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 I'm not a transphobe, but just we don't have enough time for that. Just yeah. state the truth clearly and know that they're going to call you what they're going to call you no matter what. It's true. Like, this is why I distinguish Caitlyn Jenner from somebody like a Dylan Mulvaney. You know, Caitlyn is out there actively saying men should not be in women's sports. Trans women should not be in women's sports. It's unfair. It's wrong. Like, Caitlyn's been an advocate to, to you and to me on positions like this. Caitlyn's not trying to push men into women's spaces. Now, I realize you could go down that line on bathrooms and maybe find some divergence there. Yeah. But a lot of these activists, like the ones we just watched, want to just hurl invective and name-calling to people like you and to me who see the obvious unfairness of what Leah Thomas did. Yeah, and I can appreciate the people who identify as the opposite sex and that they still have some common sense about the need for sex separation in these different spaces and competitions. Of course, just according to like my convictions and the battle that I think we're facing— I can't find it within myself to kind of say, okay, well, this man who wants to identify as a woman and wants everyone to affirm their identity as a woman and call a man she, her, that this person is acceptable and this person is not. It's not that I hate anyone, of course. It's that I just believe that it is impossible to actually transition. And because I believe that the truth is so important, I don't want to affirm the lie by equivocating on my language at all, which can be very yeah. difficult with someone that you like and that you admire yes, and that you're friends with Allie and even Beth. as your allies, uh, ally in a lot of ways. But I just, if there's anything that I'm committed to, especially when it comes to gender, because I think there's so much writing on this, is that I refuse to lie, even if that hurts someone's feelings, even someone who is on my side in a lot of ways. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to 26000 bucks per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. 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 Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.